Bone metastases occur in more than 90% of men with metastatic castration-resistant prostate cancer and are a major cause of death and disability. At the 2012 ASCO annual meeting in Chicago, Dr. Chris Parker reported results on radium-223 chloride, the first bone-targeted therapy shown to extend survival in these patients. He discussed the implications of his findings in an interview held during the meeting. The other bone-targeted therapies used in advanced prostate cancer uh, have not been shown to impact on survival. So radium-223 is the first bone-targeted drug to improve survival. And these men with end-stage prostate cancer frequently um, have skeletal-related events, such as the need for palliative radiotherapy, uh, pathological fractures, spinal cord compression. And in the Alsimca trial, uh, radium-223 significantly delayed skeletal-related events um, by an average of over five months. The hazard ratio for overall survival was 0 0.695. So in other words, that's a 30% improvement in the risk of death. If you translate that into median survivals, median survival was improved by 3.6 months. Most new drugs in prostate cancer are tested in the post-docetaxel setting. And so in order to be eligible, you have to have had docetaxel. And yet, around about half of all men with advanced prostate cancer never get docetaxel chemotherapy. Uh, we're not altogether sure why not. Uh, they might be considered too old or too unfit, but for whatever reason, they're not getting docetaxel. And it was a unique design feature of Alsimca that it included this non-docetaxel group, this group of men who hadn't had chemotherapy but were not expected to get it. 90% or more of men with advanced prostate cancer have bone metastases. Uh, and these metastases lead to a range of adverse complications, uh, such as the need for radiotherapy for bone pain, uh, pathological fracture, um, and spinal cord compression, most devastatingly of all. And we do have bone-targeted agents that are approved for prostate cancer. We have zoledronate and we have denosumab. And these agents do delay skeletal-related events, but they haven't been shown to either improve quality of life or survival. The trial um, was stratified according to use of docetaxel, use of bisphosphonates and alkaline phosphatase level. And we have looked at subgroups with respect to all three of those stratification variables. And the survival benefit appears consistent, certainly regardless of docetaxel usage and bisphosphonate usage. There is a suggestion that radium-223 might be more effective in men with elevated alkaline phosphatase levels at baseline. Radium-223 um, is extremely well tolerated. So in actual fact, there were more adverse events in the placebo arm than there were in the radium-223 arm which points to that lack of toxicity. Having said that, you do get mild GI toxicity. So you do get an increased incidence of mild diarrhea and mild vomiting. And presumably that's because radium-223 is excreted via the gut. Um, but you don't get any severe grade three or four gut toxicity. The other thing you get is myelotoxicity. Um, and this again is not a great surprise given that radium-223 is targeted to the bone. Um, the myelotoxicity is very rare. And so for example, if you look at grade three or four thrombocytopenia, in the Alsimca trial we saw it in 2% of men on placebo and 6% of men on radium-223. And what does the future hold for further study of radium-223 chloride? Um, I guess the issues that occur to me, firstly, how best to combine it with the other new therapies in advanced prostate cancer. And then secondly, um, we've tested a dose schedule giving treatment monthly for six months. It would be surprising if that was the optimal schedule for radium-223.